Aaron Fenton Sebastian was 23 years old in 1863 and eligible for being drafted into an Ohio regiment of the Union Army. The records indicate that Aaron did not serve in the war between the states. In fact, by today's standards, he would have been considered a draft dodger. And that's a very unsettling thought for me, his great-great-grandson. I served in the Navy for 32 years and, as you might imagine, my tolerance for draft dodgers is pretty low. But when I look at this picture of Aaron Sebastian, taken some years after that horrible war, I have to wonder what drove him to make the decision he did. In 1860, the nation was on the brink of calamity. Lincoln and Douglas were baiting the future of the Republic, and the 1860 census lists Aaron's occupation as servant. According to the document, his 17-year-old sister Jane was also a servant. Although they both still lived at home, the Sebastian siblings apparently went into domestic service to help the family. 1860 was also the year of Lincoln's election to the presidency. It was a bitter time and the nation was about to rip itself apart. In the North, everyone thought the war would be over quickly. But early Union defeats set the stage for a protracted and bloody conflict. Each state raised its own regiments for the army. In 1863, yet another round of recruiting was taking place, along with conscription. According to Provost Marshall records, which listed all draftable men in the Ohio 5th Congressional District, Captain Daniel Brown, the local provost, wrote that Aaron F. Sebastian was, quote, absent, left to avoid draft, unquote. Not an uncommon thing to do, but disappointing from my standpoint. To think that my great-great-grandfather avoided duty in the war between the states doesn't sit well with me. At the bottom of the document you can see the date, June 30th, 1863, where Brown signed it. What were the factors weighing on Aaron's mind as he debated whether or not to present himself before Captain Brown? By 1863, the war had entered its third year and showed no signs of slowing. In fact, the Confederacy was in the process of invading the North as part of a vigorous campaign to cut off Washington and force a Union capitulation. On June 30th, the Davies Papers were signed. The bloodiest battle of the war, Gettysburg, was less than a week away. The casualties in the war were horrific, far beyond anything we can understand today. All told, in the Iraq and Afghan wars, about 6,500 Americans have died. By the end of the Civil War in 1865, 360,000 soldiers would be dead. In the three bloodiest battles of the war up to June of 1863, Chancellorsville, Antietam, and 2nd Manassas, Union forces had suffered over 45,000 casualties alone. Journals like Harper's Weekly chronicled the slaughter, and Aaron would have seen the lucky ones, men maimed but not killed, returning home minus limbs. According to the records at Ancestry.com, Aaron married Catherine Gilmer in May of 1864. Catherine would have seen increasing numbers of women dressed in widow's black. As his sweetheart, perhaps fiancé, did she persuade Aaron to avoid his duty? It would have been a persuasive argument. Was his conscience such that he simply could not consider the possibility of killing his fellow man? Or was he just afraid to face that hell on the battlefield no matter how noble the cause of preserving the Union or how just the cause of ending slavery. I wish I could read his letters or peek into a diary to see what Aaron was thinking. 
What drove him to absent himself from that muster on June 30th, 1863? But I don't have any of those things. All I have is Captain Brown's terse entry in the official record and this photograph of Aaron. Although I can't condone what Aaron Sebastian did, at least I can understand why he may have done so. And, most importantly, I can forgive him. Rest in peace, great-great-grandfather. Rest in peace.